on the football show after nine o'clock. But now Kevin Byrne, boxing journalist with the Irish Sun, is with us. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Nathan. How are you doing? I'm very well. It's been quite the week for the Irish team at the Women's European Championships. A record haul. Seven medals won, which beats the five won by the men's team back in 2010. In the 2019 Women's European Championship, the Irish team won three. But Kelly Harrington, Aoife O'Rourke, Amy Broadhurst, Michaela Walsh, Shannon Sweeney, Caitlin Fryers, Tina Desmond, all guaranteed at least bronze medals. And they'll start looking to upgrade those medals by reaching the finals uh, when the semi-finals start tomorrow. Uh, so there's some familiar names there. There's some new names there. F- firstly, the overall success. Like, how much of this 10 years on from London, how much of it are we attributing to Katie Taylor and what she brought to Irish boxing? Um. Interesting question, I guess. Uh, like before, when Katie Taylor was an active professional or an active amateur boxer, I guess the whole women's program was was centered around Katie Taylor and her success. And the others just weren't really kind of up to her level at the time. But yeah, like you say, in the 10 years since she's won her gold medal, uh, you've seen an explosion of women's boxing. Uh, like a lot of these, a lot of these fighters on this team now, like Christina Desmond, Amy Broadhurst, they were going to the World Youths in 2013. Uh, like the year after Katie Taylor won her gold medal. And, you know, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to send them. There was there was fundraising. I think Liam Britton was doing great work to raise money to get them to these world cha- world championships. And you could see in the year in the year or two after Katie Taylor won her gold medal, the Irish underage girls started to win medals. Like Kira Ginty won a world title at World Youths. Broadhurst began her charge. And I guess Kelly Harrington stepped into the senior ranks like with massive confidence. And started winning, picked up her first world world silver in 2016. Um, so yeah, I guess you know you can attribute the explosion of women's boxing back to I suppose Katie Taylor's emergence and dominance of the sport. It's uh, obviously a whole new team now, where with Kelly Harrington as the centerpiece, the 60 kilo uh, experienced star that others look to for guidance. But there there are other experienced fighters on that team as well. Like you've got Michaela Walsh, I guess one of Ireland's unsung sports heroes. She's won three different versions of European medals already. She's and you know, three Commonwealth Games medals as well. So she's been around for a long time as well. And she's looking to upgrade to gold as well. So there's leaders on this team and there's newcomers. Uh, and there's like Kira, uh, Christina Desmond has been away, away for a couple of years and she kind of maybe lost her slot in the team. And she was focused on her career in the Garda, on Garda Shiakana, but she's back in this team now, has secured a medal also. There's Shannon Sweeney from County Mayo who's got over a couple of losses early in his career, uh, early in her career, and also a couple of bad nose injuries. And she seems to be at full fitness and flying. The emergence of Caitlin Friars as a young underage Belfast prospect, now to kind of senior achiever, has been uh, enjoyable to see as well. She's duped out a few wins, a couple of split decisions over there this week to really show her fighting heart. So this team has a bit of everything. Um, and it's just been good. They've been good to watch over there, I suppose. The performances of Amy Broadhurst have really stood out because she just goes at every opponent full gun from the start. Um, and she's, you know, she won by an impressive stoppage the other day to secure a medal. And she just looks incredibly dominant. It's hard to see anybody being able to stop her. Um, and Harrington herself seems to be, I guess, doing exactly what she did at Tokyo uh, for the Olympic Games, almost boxing within herself. And she'll peak when she needs to. Mm. But I don't think she's out of third gear yet, to be honest with you. She got a split decision against England to secure her medal the last time against uh, Shona Withwell. But she still looked like she was, you know, just cruising. So Kelly Harrington is a world champion. She's an Olympic champion, but she's still waiting for that first European championship. So a real opportunity over the weekend to complete that hat trick. You talk about her being able to turn it on when she needs to turn it on. Like her journey over the past year since Tokyo and since the Olympics and getting back in the ring and motivation, there doesn't seem to have been any difficulties there at all. No, and I, I guess like she's looking to become champion of Europe for the first time, almost on a technicality. In, like when, when she won the uh, Olympic qualifiers, that was a European continental tournament. The best of Europe were in it and she beat some of the best. So she beat England's Caroline Dubois, gave her a boxing lesson beat a returning professional, Hamadou, who she's since re-beat, uh, beaten again at this tournament out in Montenegro. And she won that tournament to qualify for the Olympic Games. And that, that was like a European Championship. It's just it wasn't in name. So she she probably is well aware that she's the best in Europe at the minute. And uh, so she just has to, I suppose, confirm a win a European Championships. And then she'll become only the second Irish boxer in history to win an Olympic me- Olympic gold medal, a World Championship gold medal, and a European Championship gold medal. The, the previous one being... 
Katie Taylor, her predecessor at 60 kilos in Ireland. She's not the only big name in this team. You've touched on some of them there. Like Amy Broadhurst is a world champion. Uh, Aoife Rourke is a reigning European middleweight champion mm-hmm. as well. Like there is such a depth to this group now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Aoife Rourke's performances out there have been pretty, pretty great. She looks like she's taken on. She's done an awful lot of work since Tokyo Games when she may be flattered to deceive it. I think her performance out there, she'd probably look back on and be a bit disappointed with, but she seems to have taken it on another notch again. Uh, the team is missing, of course, her sister, who's a reigning European under-22 champion and world champion at senior level from earlier this year. She has a thumb injury, and that allowed um, Christina Desmond to take up a place. And she's come into the team now and has won her second European silver medal and is gung-ho to, to win, win even more. So that there's experienced names. Yeah, the, the last decade, like, you, like we opened the conversation with, about the, the last decade the after Katie Taylor's emergence, those who've come next have really kind of slotted in and there's a there's an equality in, in among this team. There's no one really better than anyone else. I guess Ke- Kelly Kelly Harrington is still the totem pole and Amy Broadhurst in her slipstream and she's, you know, vying for that top spot as well. And I think, like... I think we have to acknowledge that Ireland has the two best lightweight amateur boxers in the world in Kelly Harrington and Amy Broadhurst. Uh, and the be- obviously the best lightweight in the professionals as well in, in Katie Taylor. But there's going to be there's going to be a dilemma when they come home because the Olympic Games aren't too far away. Kelly Harrington is the reigning champion, probably the number two boxer at that weight. The current world champion at that weight is Amy Broadhurst. So how they're going to make that selection, I don't know. I suppose they're going to have to fight each other, could pack, pack the national stadium to the rafters for that one. And few people have said like do it do it three times best of three you know <laughs> hey, you, it, you don't up. you don't see you don't see one of them moving through the weight divisions amy broadhurst next option is to go up to uh, 66 kilos you know and she's competing out there in montenegro at the minute at 63 and looks extremely comfortable extremely strong but she's going to want to give herself the best chance of winning an olympic gold medal mm. and that is probably at, at 60 kilos because there's an awful difference between someone of 60 kilos and 66 uh it's it's quite a lot in, in boxing terms, and you're you're fighting bigger women, probably women whose natural weight is closer to seventy who boil down make it to sixty six. So you're fighting, you know, girls you know girls half a foot taller than you, and you know, but that a more natural strength. Not that there's many boxers in the world stronger than Amy Broadhurst or better schooled than her because she's just been in the game for so long. Schools champion, youth juniors, you know, and now seniors. She's she's still she's still ripping it up really. How much is this being discussed behind the scenes, the potential of Harrington and Broadhurst having to fight each other and like the potential for Irish boxing of, you know, Kelly Harrington not going to an Olympics to defend her title? Yeah, not really. Too, not, I, I'm not really hearing too much conversation, but uh, some of the journalists among us are, uh, you know, excited about the prospect. Mm. You know, we all want to see, uh, you know, the crowds back at the National Stadium and excitement about boxing and uh you know, people turning up for domestic shows, like, you know, I suppose like the heyday of boxing, but doesn't, I haven't really heard too much uh, proper conversations about it. I guess everyone's hoping that Amy Broadhurst does them a favor or something and attempts to go at 66 kilos or some, you know, something, like, to, you know, an Irish solution to an Irish problem, really. Uh, there's obviously a lot of negativity around amateur boxing and the fact that Bernard Dunn now is going to India. Obviously, we're still talking about the loss of Billy Walsh. Uh, but what Zoranti is continuing to do with these fighters and continuing to get them to deliver, we don't talk about that enough. It's probably the main. It's probably the main thing, the main uh, thread that goes between the beginning of Ireland's success and the continuation of Ireland's success. Zor has remained a constant, and his boxers have his stamp. And you know, Billy Walsh is a tremendous director of boxing and tre- is a tremendous coach and you can see by his success in the USA and I guess Bernard Dunn I think is going to be quite successful out in India but I guess keeping Zor I know Kelly Harrington came out the bat for Bernard Dunn said the team's going to really miss him and uh, he, sh- he you know the IBA should have done whatever they could do to make him stay but I guess losing Zor anti would be a whole different world of pain um, and it's going to happen someday you know he's not a, he's not 30 he's 60 I think so it's going to happen someday that they're going to have to replace him but there are good coaches in Ireland I know that there was a controversial quote Do you remember when Billy Walsh left and, and someone said ah there's, t- there's 20 more coaches like that in Ireland which was a bit which was very controversial made a lot of headlines but there are some there are some class coaches in Ireland and I think Zoranti has been you know quite careful to you know allow people to feed off him and, and learn a few lessons from him and that's probably worked against Ireland you know that's you know that's also helped attract uh, coaches or associations from around the world as well to oh, I want one of these Irish coaches that's learned from Zoranti because they're not going to get the main man himself we are very quickly heading towards 
just being 18 months out from Paris and the next Olympics and, you know, talking about Amy Broadhurst and Kelly Harrington there really brings it into focus and not helped by the fact that there's a small number of weight classes in women's Olympic boxing. The rest of that team and, and how they're shaping up and, and how many and the qualification process that they're going to go through over the next 18 months. When can these fighters start to qualify for the Olympics? Yeah, that, it's kind of unclear at the minute, really, Nathan. It's... Uh... The, not surprising. Will the, will, I'd yeah, have to will, say. will the IBA, the, the International Boxing Association, be allowed run qualifiers? Probably not. Will it come down to the, the Olympic Federation again and the task force who've run the last boxing tournament, you know, quite successfully? Will they will they arrange it again? So it's it's quite unclear as yet. Uh, there are there are those who know more than me about the the pipeline that's been laid out, but I think there's a lot of people still in the dark. The fighters themselves, really, they just have to keep winning. Like there, there's another selection dilemma that's that's coming up as well. Like you can see, Aoife O'Rourke's performances out there. She like she's really come on leaps and bounds now from the Olympic Games last year. Her sister's the reigning champion. It could have two Ross Common women in the same household going for the same uh, 75 kilo jersey in Ireland, unless Lisa O'Rourke can somehow boil down the, the weight. But that's going to be difficult. So there's two two sisters looking for the jersey as well, and I can't see them having a box off there either. So it's going to be a massive dilemma. Uh, one last thing before we let you go. Uh, officially confirmed that Tyson Fury is going to fight Derek Chisora for the third time. It's going to be at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London on the 3rd of December. I think it was always going to feel a little bit underwhelming once Fury Joshua uh, didn't happen and we wait and we wait. Like, Do you give Chisora any chance against Fury? No, absolutely nothing. Um, it's the answer to a question that nobody's asked. It's just an opportunity, I guess, for Fury to remain active, give us give us pal a payday. Like their first fight was was twenty eleven, and it, it was quite a relevant fight at the time because there was an impression of Fury as being a bit of a clown. Like, what's this? What's this circus show all about? Or, you know, he, he was entertaining. He talked the talk, but he was going up against uh, Chisora at the time. Both of them fourteen and zero, and then I guess Fury proved his credentials as a proper challenger by winning the fight. The rematch was so one sided. It was. You know, you could tell by one or two rounds in, I think Fury boxed him southpaw. Chisora hadn't a chance, showed up in awful condition. And I think I saw speculation there on Twitter recently that Fury or Chisora must be the highest paid, must have, he must have made more money from losing fights than anyone in the history of boxing. Like, yeah, uh, because he's been pay per view recently, he does entertain the fans, but he loses all of those fights. And Fury has moved since their last fight, he's moved on like massively. He's in his prime. Chisora is on the decline, and it's a. I think it's a dangerous fight. I think it's really sad to see uh, Chisora going into a fight like that as well. Like he'll get paid, but you know, what price is long term health? He's probably already at risk of, you know, trouble later in life. He's taken a lot of heavy hits over the last couple of years, and uh, I don't. I don't think it's a fight anyone wants to see. And I think what people should do is, <coughs> pardon me, don't buy tickets to it. Don't buy the pay per view. Ignore it and. Hopefully these silly, silly matches that are coming up in boxing far too frequently will go away because every week now there's, you know, they're putting some fight on the plate and the response from the fans is like, who asked for this? Who wants this? And it's just, oh, well, the promoters, you know, fa fancy making this match. It'll make them a bit of money and on we move. If if it's part of a plan of Fury just to get active and take on Alexander Usyk next year, okay, we can, we can maybe let it slide. But then again, what of Chisora's health? I don't think there's any way it's going to be a competitive showdown anyway, Nathan. All right, Kevin, great stuff as always.